the family tree of the Anunnaki, those who came down from the heavens. We also call them Genesis giants or Nephilim. The ancient Anunnaki are often referred to as the immortal gods that lived on earth during ancient Sumerian timeline in Mesopotamia. We also know from ancient Greek mythology and ancient Greek texts that the Olympian gods were also extraterrestrials. Now, according to the Mesopotamian mythology, the Anuna or Anunnaki were initially the most powerful gods and lived in Anu in heaven. They lived with the Anu in heaven. Now, we know that there's another culture that called the extraterrestrials Anu, and those are the Native American Indians. They called the extraterrestrials that came from the skies to visit them and give them laws. They called them Anu, A-N-U, the same name exactly. Now later, without having established a clear motive for this change, the Igigi were considered as celestial gods, while the term Anuna was used to designate the gods of the underworld, especially seven gods who served as judges in the underworld. And in the myth of Atrahasis, it stated that before the creation of man, the gods had to work to live. Gods with a small g, of course. Now then the Anuna made a category of inferior gods, the Igigi, to work for them until they rebelled or refused to continue working. Then Enki created humanity so that uh, it could uh, continue performing the tasks that the minor gods had abandoned and through, cult, uh, the, through the cult that would provide food to the gods. In the Enuma Elish, it was Marduk who created humanity. That's the mythology saying that and then divided the Anuna between heaven and earth and assigned them tasks. And next, the Anuna, grateful to Marduk, founded Babylon and built a temple in his honor called Esagil, Esagila. And the, re the reinvention of Anuna term through its Akkadian form Anunnaki arose in 1964 after the publication of the book Ancient Mesopotamia Portrait of a Dead Civilization by Adolf Leo Oppenheim, who popularized this concept, which was taken by different blogs and characters from the esoteric world and pseudoscientific portals. I highly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. Author Zachariah Sitchin published a dozen books known as The Earth Chronicles from the 1970s, and that's where he describes in great detail the Anunnaki. In his books, Sitchin offers uh, translated ancient Sumerian clay tablets and texts which were written in a cuneiform script that describes these Anunnaki. In the book The Twelfth Planet, Sitchin tells the arrival of the Anunnaki to Earth from a supposed planet called Nibiru about 450,000 years ago. Tall beings, about 9 to 10 feet in height, with white skin, long hair and beard, who would have settled in Mesopotamia, and that by genetic engineering accelerated the evolution of the Neanderthal to Homo sapiens. Now the description of these Anu are the same exact description that the Native American Indians gave of the Anu, two white-haired, uh, two white-haired, bearded, uh, Caucasian-looking. Now, um, so the genetic engineering uh, would have been taking place, accelerating the evolution of Neanderthal to Homo sapiens, contributing to their genetics for the need of supposed slave workers, as the mythology goes. According to Sitchin's writings, the technology and power of the Anunnaki is something. Our civilization cannot replicate even today in the 21st century. Sitchin stated that the ancient inhabitants of Nibiru had the ability for space travel and genetic engineering 450,000 years ago and that they would have left traces of their existence all over Earth with small clues pointing to a still unknown technology that is present in various forms in the construction of pyramids, Egypt, Mayan, Aztec, Chinese, for example in the megalithic site of Stonehenge and the spaceport of Baalbek and the Nazca Lines and in Machu Picchu. Other theories are, are many and that some scholars refer to as a mythological species. Other points towards interstellar travelers that came to Earth thousands of years ago. 
And uh, I do have the playlist of the Emerald Tablets written by Thoth the Atlantean. And he does uh, very explicitly tell us the very advanced technology that they had. And uh, they had space travel, interstellar travel, and uh, interdimensional travel. And they, uh, he says that they were guilty of uh, abusing uh, the use of their technology, that the divine spirit uh, that they called God told them not to do so, and they did anyway. And he says it was a matter of time before divine intervention put an end to the Atlanteans because of their uh, uh, psychic, uh, their spiritual uh, disobedience. Now, if the Anunnaki were real, who were they and who was the first of them and what is their bloodline and can we trace them back in history to specific deities? Uh, let's remember Genesis giant the Nephilim. You'll see a couple of videos back the Denisovians uh, were supposedly living alongside modern humans 45,000 years ago. Denisovians were what we call Nephilim very giant beings. Their skulls were almost twice as big as our human skull. Now, uh, going back to this, what is their bloodline, and can we trace them back in history to specific deities? There, there are various family trees, quote-unquote, available on the internet with a series of differences in them. For example, the following three of the family tree uh, more inclined to the Mesopotamia, especially Babylonian, the version of the Anunnaki bloodline, evidence that is the inclusion of Tiamat, and Marduk, the grand assembly of the Anunnaki, quote unquote, essentially the family tree of the ruling class of the god and goddesses of the Sumerian texts is given by Lawrence Gardner in Genesis of the Grail Kings, Bantam Press, New York, 1999. And it starts with uh, Absa Tiamat, Mother Habar, the Dragon Queen, and it goes down to uh, Nergal, uh, Erish Kigal, Queen of the Netherworld, King of the Netherworld, Lilith, the beautiful queen, consort of the gods, handmaiden of Inanna, and uh, others as well. The slightly different versions also uh, are uh, there concerning Ki, Anu, Shara, Lulai, Enki, Marduk, and uh, various others. Please leave your comments on this and thank you for your support. This is on Humans Are Free. And let's remember the other strange thing about these Sumerians is that uh, they lived for tens of thousands of years. They had very, very longevity. And uh, the Sumerian king list shows us that uh, two or three kings alone could have lived for 100, 150,000 years. So that was a strange um, reality as well. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.